today I'm going to be adding a hydraulic wedge to the 322-24 rug and made splitter. I'm also going to be adding the height on this just a little bit on the wedge. That way that wedge won't pop off and uh, hit anybody. It'll have to go real high. Plus I'll be able to push it way up high so I can use that single way on those bigger rounds. Um, I'll be adding a mod on the six way and the four way wedge so it'll work on this unit here. And I also got a hydraulic from Rugged Made. It's a little big for this application but they have really good deals on hydraulics so I'd recommend uh, going to Rugged Made's website if you need cheap hydraulics. Also I have a bushing that I need to make for this. It is pot metal so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it to weld because my torch might not get it hot enough. If not I'll have to run the town and get a bushing to weld on to attach the hydraulic. Alrighty I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let's get into it. I guess the idea of this ditch welding is to uh, keep it from cracking.
normally I wouldn't be going from pot metal to mild steel. But this is just holding the hydraulic in place. There's really not much pressure on this. It's going to be pushing into the steel. Looks pretty ugly. I guess that's what happens when you weld the pot metal. Hey friends, Chris here again, just giving you guys a little update on what's going on for today. Uh, I'm welding on my attachment for the hydraulic. I'm going to be welding upside down. i got to lay some beads under here, so that might be kind of tricky. We'll see if I can do it. I have some all-angle welding rods, some 6013. Um, should do the job as long as I stitch weld it. Um, then we're also going to be adding the hitch part on here and I want to tell you guys why I went with this design instead of uh, the wedge style like the Easton maids have with the, for the box wedge where they just slide up um, those machines are really heavy and it's hard to move that wedge out uh, that style if you don't have like a machine or something and also this machine's only 22 tons so there's no way this machine will ever be able to push a box wedge and also the mount below the log lift is kind of in the way for the linkage um, for that design and also you can remove these wedges pretty easy if you have to remove the wedge for some reason uh, these are a lot lighter um, so if I did have like at least a 28 ton machine I would go with the other design so I could uh, put a box wedge on it at some point but there's no way this machine's going to push a, a box wedge set up on it. Alright let's get into it.
I not recommend doing this. Uh, the blade was out of stock. I was gonna, gonna order a taller one, but Lego made was sold out. So I had to get another stock one. That 6011 doesn't weld this good. It's that bike with this machine for other reasons, but I gotta get really deep in there. Gonna add it some extra material I'm gonna grind off right there. This got really hot, so I'm gonna grind it off. This was the 611 I was using. And the 6013, this Harbor Freight machine, really likes this stuff, but it's just for mild steel. This is for deep penetrating construction. So I went with that for the blade, I figured it'd be stronger, but I'll see. Okay, YouTube. This lighting kind of sucks. This is what we did right here. This thing's a beast. I was not expecting to have to grind this off. Those little crooked not focus because of the lighting. Almost 23 inches. The wedge is going to float up here while I split the smaller stuff uh, that gets knotty. So I'm not really going to be using this top wedge actually to be splitting. It's just going to hold the wedge up in the air. Alrighty, I'll be back in a few. Going to let this grinder cool off. That was a little insane. Little pieces everywhere. Whole woods would have covered them though. All right, we'll be back.
Hey friends, Chris here, just giving you an update on the project today. I got the hoses on, everything connected, um, no leaks or anything, was able to get the hoses routed. I also used this uh, Apache thread sealant on there. I did have to, um, I had to go to my day job for, you know, four days, and I checked the, the uh, fluid on the outside and it still hasn't hardened, so not quite sure how that stuff works but I'm gonna test it out and see um, and I tested out the wedge obviously earlier everything works great uh, a lot of control in the wedge this hydraulics a little overkill for this setup but I was hoping by having a larger hydraulic you know I'd have to push more fluid in there so it'll give me more control overall and I wouldn't have to put a reducer on the flow so it works really great for that and it's going half inch to three eighths also so that's going to slow the flow down a little bit i tested out both wedges everything works great i haven't ran any uh, wood through it yet but we're going to see here shortly and also i will be moving this hitch down below at some point because there's not enough space that i'm going to be towing this around but i need to get some work done and I won't be able to tackle the conveyor anytime soon and once I get a conveyor I'm gonna have to figure out a different hitch system anyways and also I'm gonna have to adjust these legs on the splitter so today I will be putting a plate on the the valving and also I will be adding a work tray to the splitter on the side right here and then the catching tray that the wood drops into I'm going to be setting that up so it can push into a conveyor so when I tackle that project I won't have to do that and also it'll keep the firewood from falling on the ground and we always have to pick it up because it falls off the tray most of the time so we won't have to do that anymore once I get that fixed. Alright, let's get into it.
Right, let me show you what I did here. Got this bracket on. Two bolts back there. This is what I was telling you guys about this thread sealant. It's been there for four days, it hasn't sealed yet. Interesting.
stuff has four days to dry. Hey friends, if you made it this far into the video, I sure do appreciate it. It really helps out the video and the channel. So I finally got this thing together and working. And that Apache thread sealant did not work at all. I ended up just using some Teflon tape. I know you're not supposed to use that, but that's just what I had on hand. And I made sure it was really tight and got everything to where it wasn't leaking finally. And I also had to put that hydraulic valve for the wedge on the other side of the handles because for some reason whenever the hydraulic was under load it would activate the hydraulic wedge I believe it's because it didn't have a power beyond port so when it was overloading the hydraulic pressure was getting diverted to the through the hydraulic valve on the wedge so it would just start going up once I tried to split something hard but I put it on the other side and was able to get it working like that. I put quite a few hours on the machine since I did this and I really like it. I don't really use the six way wedge too much because it makes more like pizza wood and you gotta have just the right size uh, dimension wood to put on that wedge. About the same size as the wedge, about 10 inches or so and you can just run it through with one pass and not have to do any resplits but it makes like pizza style cut in wood so it it's harder to stack and it, it gets stuck more on the on the grate on my chute there that I have to get the small stuff out and I like the four-way wedge a lot more because it cuts pretty clean wood nice square pieces and also since this machine is only a 22 ton wood splitter it does not like pushing that six-way wedge so it has to be like clean perfectly straight wood to run that six way I usually like using it on soft woods is when I pull out the six way I might end up adding a bypass valve for the return and add an extra line to the tank so that way the return will speed up a little bit but right now this is just a budget build so that will cost me probably at least six seven hundred bucks if I buy the auto return and a dump valve right now but right now this works pretty good and I just did this on a budget and I believe this is one of the cheapest budget builds you can do right now a lot of the wood splitters that come with the hydraulic wedge and a log lift already are over ten thousand dollars and there's also a waiting time so this machine I bought it pre-covid for pretty cheap about twenty eight hundred bucks um, before tax and shipping and then I got five six hundred bucks in materials on the wedge itself with the hydraulic and everything so I truly believe this is one of the best budget builds you can do right now if you made it this far into the video I really appreciate it, it really helps out the channel if you could please hit that like subscribe the share and the bell icon I really would appreciate it alrighty we'll see you on the next one